What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Fallout video and today I'm bringing you episode 32 of our top 5 mods series. And if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and let's get right into it. Never pay full price for games again guys, use the link in the description to get up to 90% off of all G2A games. Alright guys, so the first mod that we're going to be doing is the Repaired Castle Walls mod by Noah K 20 and this is basically a mod that is repairing the castle walls at the Minutemen Castle. And if you aren't aware, basically at the Minutemen Castle, basically all the walls are pretty much broken down, so it doesn't really add that much defense um, against attackers like that. So if you do want to do some base building, you do have to build it up yourself using the shack foundations or any type of concrete material like that. That's what I've always used personally, and that's what I've seen a lot of people use in videos on YouTube. So what this mod does is it kind of fills in the walls kind of like a pre-war castle type thing. So they're going to be completely filled in. They're going to look seamless and like really, really nice and not broken down like they do now. And that's going to be the case for all four sides of the castle. And the only really problem that this mod does have is that whenever you do install this mod, it's going to be on all like sides of the castle. So there isn't actually going to be a door because for some reason I don't know why but the mod creator kind of covered up the entrance with a just seamless wall now so you cannot get into that little room to open the door and get out of the castle but it's a pretty easy fix basically just go ahead and craft a staircase and you can make some pretty good looking staircases to get into your game this one right here is just a little fast one I did to get into it but you can make some pretty cool ones in my base build for the castle I actually made a pretty cool one um, and it's really not that big of a deal but if it is that much of a deal breaker you can always just get a PC and download the Fallout 4 version for the PC and you can have any mod you want but also for this mod it's not going to be requiring any DLC or anything like that and for the most part it's going to be pretty much fine with all other mods it's not going to be affecting anything like that so you should be good there too all right guys so the next mod we're going to be talking about is a special flight helmets and eyeglasses mod by balded blazer and what this is going to be doing it is going to be adding in one pair of eyeglasses and three different flight helmets that can be crafted at any chem station or the under the utility menu and so as you can see right here, if you just go to any chemistry workbench, you can go ahead and press craft, go all the way down to the bottom under utilities, and then you can go ahead and craft the flight helmets for free. But you can also add a ton of new upgrades to these hats. And I'm going to be showing you all the customization that they do have in the future of this video. Once they've been crafted, these items can be modified to any armor workbench with the following options, and that is add 1 to 10 points of your special stats, add 10 to 100 to all damage resistance, change the texture of the eyeglasses and helmets, change the glass type of eyeglasses and helmets um, you can also add a legendary slot a ballistic weave slot uh, lining slot for the vault suit combat armor and just more armor benefits along those lines and I found that with even though this is a ps4 mod these do actually have a lot of customization in the craft menu so as you can see right here I'm kind of showcasing the helmets and that was the flight helmet s1 this is going to be the flight helmet s2 and it is probably my least favorite just because I don't like the huge screen on it that you have and make it I think it looks kind of dorky um, right here is going to be the flight helmet s3 and this one also isn't my favorite the my favorite honestly is the um, flight helmet s1 and this one just looks kind of goofy as well just because it has such a huge window for your face but if you're doing some futuristic builds these can look pretty cool I just like how the first flight helmet kind of looks almost like a power armor helmet so that's gonna be the one I'm gonna be modifying and I just think it looks the coolest out of all of them and the, the most futuristic. So as you can see right here in the gameplay, these have a ton of customization um, options for you. So if you're doing a lighter build, you can use the light build. If you're using a more of a like heavier type build, you can do one to increase your carrying weight. All different types of stuff. As you can see right here, there's just many options for you to choose from depending on what kind of playstyle you have. Now the only thing sort of negative whenever you're doing this, you cannot see the actual textures of the glass and stuff like that on your helmet whenever you are in the workbench menu. So if you actually want to see all the stuff you're doing, you're going to have to go out of the workbench and see how your helmet looks afterwards, which kind of sucks on like the paintings and stuff like that, but it's not really that big of a deal. The mod creator also says that sometimes you can use some textures that might cause the glass type to look different or not even show up at all, and this can be fixed just by changing the glass type and changing it back. But throughout my entirety of using this mod, I've never had any really problems with bugs or anything like that. But as you can see, I have actually done a ton of modification to mine. You don't have to make yours this OP. Um, if you do want to kind of do more of a more realistic build to make your armor not really that insane, you can do that. But I think mine looks really, really cool. Also, this mod does not require any DLC or anything like that, and it's not going to be affecting any other mods in your load order. 
our next mod we're going to be talking about is Free Fall 4, the Fallout Director's Cut mod by Desire. And what this mod is, is, is essentially just a bug fix and essentially a patch um, for the game that a mod creator has actually done to kind of fix a lot of the really annoying bugs and glitches and just annoyances in the game whilst restoring a lot of unusual content. Now, the version that I'm showcasing right now is going to be the one that works without DLC. However, there are specific versions and packages that you can get for this mod that will um, enable DLC versions too for Har Far Harbor and Nuka World. The mod creator states in the description that it does work best if you do load up this mod on a fresh new game just because it's kind of all the files are just new and it's just going to work a lot better if you're just going to do a new playthrough with it. But if you do want to play it right now, it's a fantastic game having the best possible experience, free from most of the bugs now and glitches and annoyances to get the experience that you intended whenever you bought the game. Because I think it's kind of safe to say that Bethesda isn't the best at creating constant bug fixes and fixing everything whenever it needs to be, just considering that a lot of glitches are not getting patched that have been out for a long time, but... Just remember that a lot of things in this mod are going to be sort of limited just because of the restrictions for PS4 where you can't exactly edit the scripts, so a lot of like dialogue and glitches like that are not going to be fixed, but a lot of just little bugs that kind of annoy you in the game are going to be fixed now. And this mod is going to be like working great with a lot of other mods too, so it's not going to be affecting any other ones, so it's great to load up whenever you're trying to do a modded playthrough or something like that because you don't have to worry about it affecting any mods in your load order or having to worry about putting it in a certain spot in your load order. And overall, it's just a really, really cool mod if you're not one to try to change many things, but kind of like more improve your gameplay. Our next mod I'm going to be showcasing is the Caravaneer's Cheat Crate by John Shaft 1, and this is basically a sort of crate that you can find at Vault 111 in the Cryo Bay that's going to be giving you a full set of leather armor, a combat shotgun, 100 rounds for that shotgun, bobby pins, and a special improved stats wasteland uh, leather under armor, which is going to be pretty cool. And so, like I said, this is going to be found at Vault 111, so just go over to that spot, press the road button, and go down into the vault, and sort of make your way towards the cryo bay. And if you don't know where the cryo bay is, that is ex pretty much where, at the very beginning of the campaign, um, you're going to be at where your kid gets um, stolen and, you know, all that stuff happens. So once you get to the cryo bay, sort of just make your way all the way to the back of the room, and there's going to be a box at the very end that's going to say the Caravaneer's cheat crate, and this is where you can find all of your items. Now, it, this says a cheat crate, but it's not really um, kind of a sort of like OP cheat crate, which most mods do implement. It's in a nice starter crate for whenever you are just like starting the game, and you know, you don't really have all that many weapons because whenever you do start the game, it's kind of tough to get some weapons that are actually good and they can actually like take on enemies pretty well as well as a good set of armor and that's what I like about this mod it doesn't give you a really insane armor or any just like really really OP cheated weapons it does give you some a decent amount of armor but like it's not going to be really really OP at that rank and it's just kind of nice if you've already beaten the game you don't want to have to spend so much time grinding and getting for a first set of armor you can just go ahead and head over to the vault and grab one yourself and you have to save a lot of time where you could be playing the campaign. But I thought this was a cool little mod. It's not going to be requiring any DLC or anything like that, and it's going to be pretty much compatible with everything in the game. So, pretty decent mod if you want to load it in your load order, your playthrough, it's kind of cool. But overall, it's a pretty decent mod. Alright guys, so the final mod I'm going to be showcasing is the Pre-War House Player Home Settlement Edition by Sync08. And this is going to be another one of those um, player homes for Fallout 4, but it, this one is going to be requiring the Far Harbor DLC. But if you do want to find this one, it's going to be located near Fort Hagen. Um, it's going to be a little bit north of it, and you can see it on the map. It's going to be marked as the pre-war house, and it's just south of Sanctuary. But to get into this house, you are going to have to have a key, and all the keys are going to be located to the left of this place um, by going over, and there's going to be a dead body, and there's going to be a duffel bag right next to him. Go ahead and just look in the duffel bag, and they should have the key to all the gates because you're going to need one to the main gate, the back gate, and one to get into the like guest house, I think. But once you have the key, you can go ahead and just open the main gate, and if you go to your right, there's going to be a sort of little like guard dog, and he just attacked me, so I had to kill him. But his name is Bullet, and I don't know if you can tame him at all or do anything like that, but I just had to go ahead and kill him just to get him out of my way here or else he would have killed me. But the first thing I'm going to be taking a look at in this mod is going to be the actual player home house itself. So if you go to the front, there's going to be a big red door. Go ahead and go through it. When you open it up, you're going to be greeted by a pretty big room. Um, to your left is going to be the sort of living room area with the TV and the couch, which wouldn't really serve that much of a um, function. But I do think it looks pretty cool. It's a nice little touch for this little pre-war settlement. Um, and it's a nice player home in general because there's a lot of supplies in here for you that he actually gives to you. 
If you go farther down here, there's going to be a little dining table with a lot of little like decorative pieces. And here is the laundry room along with the kitchen. And a lot of things can actually be stored in this house. A lot of the actual decorations do serve as a um, sort of storage, which is pretty, pretty cool. As you can see right here, Kiri is already go ahead and doing the dishes for me. On the back wall over here is going to be a shelf full of just preserved foods, such as canned food and all that different types of stuff. Not stuff that I really eat that much in the game, but I mean, if you do eat that stuff, it's always there. Right here is a little mini bar, I guess, which is kind of cool and decorative. I like the lights on it, but it can also be used as a storage container. Go up the stairs right here, and now we're going to be at the bathrooms and the bedrooms. Right here is sort of a little office, and this place looks actually pretty cool. It actually has a nice little fish tank, and looks really nice in here. It looks like a nice little office. I don't know what it'd be used for in the game. You can store your little magazines on that, that stuff right here. But I don't know. Other than that, I don't really have much of a clue. You could use it for storage of armor or something like that. I don't really know. But once you go over here, if you go to your right over here, is going to be the bedroom, which you go through here. And the this place is actually pretty cool. You have a place to store all your bobbleheads. You actually have your own little personal terminal. And the bed is actually looking pretty nice. If you go to the back gate right here and go to the back house, you can actually find um the uh, little weapons he added in for you which is the double barrel shotgun which is actually a pretty decent uh weapon as far as a modded weapon it looks really really cool and it does a lot more base damage than the normal double barrel shotgun but this mod is pretty cool it does not require any dlc or anything like that and um it's going to be pretty much working with every other mod you're going to be using in the game so um, as you can see right here, this um, shotgun actually does look pretty cool. It's really cleaned up compared to the other shotguns. doesn't look so much like old like that. It's more pre-war. But if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.